growth gives you the most commonest measure of economic performance. Employment gives you another dimension because it gives you an indication of how productive we are. Budget. Let's look at the assumptions and the projections. If you've been listening to radio, um, television, um, listening to reading newspapers, I'm sure you are very, very familiar with this. The whole essence of bringing home some of this is <coughs> to give some my, my own perspective on that one. So we have the key assumptions of 42.5 per right? day. That means we expect oil price not to be lower than $42 per barrel, but it's doing more better than that, so which is good. We expected oil production of 2.2 million per barrel a day, and the government will receive the Naira of the equivalent of 305 to the US dollar. The revenue projection from the estimates of the budget is 4.9 trillion, and of these, 1.9, which is just about 40% is expected to come from oil. And corporate assets, VAT, and customer and excise duty, which is the next chunk of revenues for the federal government, is 1.3 trillion. But remember, I said that all these revenues are also dependent in a way on what happens to oil price. Expenditure is 7.9 trillion, the largest we have, largest estimate in Nigeria's history. And 2.24 trillion of that is expected to be capex. And this gives us a project deficit of 2.36 trillion. I don't know whether you quickly see what has just happened in those two lines I'm just doing. It means that the deficit of 2.36 trillion is more than the capex. So, exchange rate of 305 per US dollar. Um, the CBN continues to intervene in the exchange rate market. So you have the interbank at 305. Of course, with higher foreign exchange inflows from oil expected in 2017, and we expect this policy to also continue. So there's really nothing to talk about that uh, uh, exchange rate. The JB cash calls. This will reduce government revenues in the near term because you have to pay back the debt. The about 7 billion debt that they owe the IOCs. So they have to pay back this debt. So we expect that this deal will reduce government revenues from oil in the near term. However, and I will come to that in the however in the long term, we think this is one of the best policies that this government has shown. Taking. So overall, government oil revenue production is achievable, but it's dependent on my brothers and sisters in the Niger Delta. So are the revenue projections realistic? Let's look at other revenue projections. CIT revenue projection of 808 billion for 2017. This is lower than the 867 projected in the 2016 budget. However, let's look at the hard track performance. Between January and June 2016, we only had 161 billion um, accrued to the government from CIT and uh, 3,333 for the full year. So projection of 867 achieved 323. That's not a good performance. So even if we allow for GDP growth in 2017 and a higher level of tax compliance, it is difficult to see how we can add, arrive at the CIT for 808 billion in 2017. So that is unrealistic. Let's look at VAT. The projection is 242 billion. And um, that's higher than for 2016, which is one, which was 198 billion. But if you actually take into consideration higher inflation, and uh, because VAT is tied to trade, and if you take into consideration inflation and you combine it with more growth that we expect for 2017, so this is actually a realistic expectation. For customs revenue production of 278 billion, um, that's also realistic. Uh, is 
lower compared to 2016, and half year in 2016 was 103. And if you prorata it, it's a plus 206 million for the full year 2016. So when you have 278, given the expectations for 27, that also appears realistic. But if you look at all the three data, the CIT is the one that is the most unrealistic, and what is the CIT in which we expect the most? Next slide. So that graphical is just a graphical representation of what I've just said. Corporate tax, if you compare the actual with the projections, it looks the same. The difference is very, very significant, but not so much for VAT and for customs and SI duties. So, comparison to recent years, just looking at recent years, VAT and CIT, if you look at the blue bar, from 2011 to 2016, VAT actually remained fairly stagnant at the same level. Meanwhile, the expectation is like a dump in 2017, so we'll see what that happens. And if you look at the red bar, that's the CIT, uh, even though there's been some fluctuations in the CIT revenues uh, uh, that accrue to the government, the 2017 is also very, very significant. There's a significant between the 2017 expectation and the performance for 2016. So, let's look at deficit next slide. This is where I think we need to really focus um, our fiscal part um, for this year. Um, what's happening to deficit? I know that the economic conditions are deteriorating, but government expenses, not so much. I mean, there's still high expectations of government. So let's look at the deficit and borrowing. And let's look at the estimates that the government have and let's see whether we can provide one or two thoughts on that. This deficit projection that we have is 2.36 trillion. 2.36 trillion. And we have already seen that the government actual revenue is likely to be lower. If you look at the CIT expectation, if you take out the about 400 billion that we think may not be achieved from that, alone, don't just add it to this if you really want to implement the budget fully. So we're talking almost 3 trillion that we need to be borrowed. So, but in 2016, federal government had problems in implementing the budget. Why? Because the revenues expectations were not met. And uh, what are the implications? Government will have to borrow more, or it has to reduce expenditure, or a combination of both. But we know what usually happens. They borrow, and of course, capex suffers. Why? Because politically and administratively, it is easier for the government to abandon its capital expenditure than to really reduce its salary obligations. But the problem that we need to ask ourselves, we cannot take salary obligations as given. We, may, we cannot take salary obligations as given. There is a manner in which these obligations grow. So how do we deal with that? There is a manner in which people enter the government as workers. Whether they do the work is another matter, but there is a manner in which they enter. So we cannot take as given salary obligations. We also need, as part of our policy, we also need to find out why does these obligations grow from year to year, even when their plan is not regular. Next slide. So are these projections realistic? Let's look at external borrowing. We have external borrowing of 1.67 trillion at an exchange rate of 305 to the US dollar. It means that the government is expecting to borrow 5.475 billion this year, US dollars. However, if you look at the economic conditions, you look at the rating, it is very, very difficult as an economist to see where this 5.475 4 billion will come from. But let's look at it in detail. In 2016, the expectation was that the government will borrow 3.5 billion US dollars. I don't know how many of you that remember that. In the budget, it was an expectation of 3.5 US billion dollars. And I don't know how many of you know how much was achieved. Mere 600 million dollars. The 1 billion euro bond uh, offering was repeatedly postponed. 
And uh, my understanding is that another journey towards receiving, towards borrowing that one billion has started again for 2017 budget. So if you assume that the African Development Bank, which has promised to borrow us one billion dollars, will give us the balance of 400 million dollars, and assuming even with the highest level of interest rate that the government will offer yields, international yields, uh, that it will get the 1 billion euro. So we have just 1.4. We are still left with about 4 billion US dollars. So where would that gap be filled? So that's why I use the word impossible.